classic Second World War vehicle coming on now. This is an example of the American Sherman. The Sherman, again, it's part of that uh, development process in the background that the Americans have been doing in the 1930s. When war comes, they start with the production of an interim tank called the M3 Grant tank. And again, you can see an example in the museum. Um, what they're doing there is they knew they couldn't produce a fully functional 360-degree turreted tank straight away. So they're using components which they've already been developing. They make the Grant. They actually have engineers that have escaped from France, from the Le Crusoe factory, help them with castings out in America. Sherman was really effective um, using what they called HVAP, High Velocity Armour Piercing Ammunition, which was available later in 1944, basically a tungsten core to the round, and that had tremendous penetration. Um, again, with this vehicle, you can see it's got that wider track on it, HVSS suspension, it's a newer type of suspension they were developing and uh, this particular one uh, was made by the Fisher Tank Arsenal um, and they made about a thousand of these uh, in early in 1945. A lot of these ones were actually used uh, by the Allied Force. And again, one of those vehicles that uh, was made in such vast numbers, very sensibly by the Americans, they made it reliable, they made it accessible, you could repair a Sherman quite easily, and they made them at about 30 tons because they knew they were going to be shipped around the world. Um, someone pointed out this is probably the first strategically produced tank because uh, the fighting wasn't going on in America. These tanks had to be put on boats, sent either across the Pacific or across the Atlantic, um, and were used in vast numbers. We think about 50,000 plus Shermans were made in World War II, and if you compare that as it goes past 1,300 Tiger Ones, so it's a numbers game for World War II tank warfare. So that's a Sherman part.